of the Hive. Chapter 4, Part 4 Twilight burst into Sprocket's office on the fourth floor a half hour later, panting. I hate stairs so very much right now. I really need to get my wing strength up. Sprocket was standing near one of his drawing boards when he turned to face the winded mare. Ah, good student. I like a student who believes in being early, he said while completely ignoring her discomfort. He flew over to a high-mounded line of shelves in the back of the room to fish through some papers. I'll have your test in a moment. Why don't you place your belongings on the door? I want no temptations for cheating. Twilight would have been insulted if she hadn't been out of breath. I do not cheat. He found the paper that he was looking for and grabbed it in his hoof. Yes, yes, they all say that. He landed on the ground next to her. This way, if you please. We need to get to the testing room. Twilight followed wordlessly, as they passed several rooms until they got to one with a heavy bronze iris door. Sprocket used a jolt of magic to activate the portal, and it opened, to reveal a small desk and a chair with decent lighting. The walls were lined with dark orange resin. What is this place? She inquired, while looking around the Spartan decor. This is the mute testing room. You'll see when I close the door. I'll be kind and give you a warning. It can be quite jarring the first time. She was perplexed by the statement. What are you- As soon as the door sealed behind him, the hive mind went silent. All of the voices that welcomed her and embraced her as one of their own were shut off. She was alone in her thoughts for the first time since she hatched, and the sudden silence left her with a migraine, quivering in terror. Without the memories of her past, she would have been a gibbering mess on the floor. Sprocket always felt a little guilty about doing that. Don't worry, this room only acts as a filter. You're still one with the link, you just simply can't hear them. Twilight was rubbing her forelegs to get the chills out from her being so alone. Do you really not trust me? She growled indignantly. You simply don't understand what the Queen has done forcing me to take on an apprentice. Your discomfort will pass, and if you can't handle a little stress on the job, then you're not cut out to be under my wing. I'm starting to think that might be rather unhealthy. Sprocket dropped the test on the desk, which had already had an inkwell and a quill waiting for her. This room wouldn't be necessary at all if I knew that you didn't have help. No pony could possibly read and understand even those basic principles in two days. Those cliff notes of hers must have been given to her by some pony else, possibly even mother. Well, go on, get started. When you're done, use this lever here to open the door and give your exam to me. Taking a deep, calming breath, Twilight walked over and sat down at the desk. Sprocket pulled a lever next to the door, and a sphere enclosed him and the exit to keep the link filtered out when he opened the door and left. As soon as the door shut again, the sphere slid back into the floor. She wrapped the quill in her orange magic, and flipped the test over to the first problem. You can do this, Twilight. You haven't even spent a full week in the hive mind, and you got through it back then just fine. You can handle an hour or two without it. Just focus, you need to focus. For two hours, the test picked and prodded at Twilight's brain so much that a throbbing headache threatened to make her pass out. Years under Celestia had shaped and molded Twilight's very way of thinking to make her an excellent test taker, but Sprocket's test was ruthless and the absence of the link made it worse. And the test picked through obscure methodologies and downright criminally obtuse requirements of solving calculations. The final question had been a short essay on why Twilight thought that she could ever dream of standing in Sprocket's shadow as his apprentice. It took a monumental effort to keep from using that as an excuse to vent her frustrations at Sprocket for rushing her test and cutting off the link. If he thinks I'm gonna give him flowery praise, he can guess again. With the test held firmly in her magic, Twilight bolted for the door and pulled the lever to open the door. She slumped in the empty hallway as the chorus of voices flowed back into her. <sighs> I feel whole again. It only took a few seconds for her mind to reacclimate to the link. She was surprised to feel an extremely angry Kadista in the direction of Sprocket's office. That can't be good. Twilight tried to hide her presence from the hive mind as she crept towards his office. She could hear shouting coming through the closed door. Kadista was staring needles through Sprocket. We'll give you the right to place her in a testing chamber! She's barely out of the shell anyone who traumatized her by silencing the link! He shrunk away from the IRA queen. I can't believe this. I thought you were above that. After I free her from the torture chamber, you and I are going to have a long discussion about your career. As Kadista was about to head for the door, Sprocket held out a pleading hoof. Let's not jump to conclusions, my queen. Twilight Sparkle wasn't taking this apprenticeship seriously. Kadista was almost at the door. We'll see about that after I free her. She burst through the door to find Twilight waving at her with a sheepish grin. Oh, hey. I, uh, I finished. Kadista's presence in the link instantly shifted to apologetic concern. Oh, thank goodness you're alright. After I noticed that you weren't responding to me, I had half of the hive looking for you until this one... She stepped a hoof behind her to Sprocket. ...came forward with his crimes. I had no idea that he would go this far with you, or any pony for that matter. Twilight was just happy to see Kadista, but felt she should at least put on an air of strength in Sprocket's presence. It wasn't fun, but I survived intact. Her chest flew over and landed on the engineer's desk. 
I think that should take care of my exam. Even if I failed, I can at least prove to him that Twilight Sparkle doesn't cheat. Kadista sent Twilight Acolytes for the hive mind before addressing both of them. Somebody else will have to grade that test, I'm afraid. The position for Chief Engineer has just been vacated. My queen, I must protest! Sprocket nearly shouted. You decreed that Twilight was to be treated as any other sister. She simply could have not read 12 detailed textbooks in two days. She either got others to help her, or she didn't care enough to take it seriously. I did read those books! Twilight retorted. But I told you I wasn't ready for the exam yet. I wanted time to read them and go over my notes. Sprocket scoffed. Oh, please. You may have won Mother over because of some nonsense with being a foreign diplomat or something, but I deal in cold facts. No pony reads and comprehends reference texts that fast. Kadista had enough, and was going to reassign him to grunge duty once Twilight made a rebuttal. Then why not grade my exam? You put me in that filter room. I couldn't have possibly cheated, right? Twilight looked to Kadista. Alright, I'll try it your way for the moment. The matriarch glared at Sprocket before flicking her head towards the waiting test. As he sulked over to it, she led Twilight out of the room to speak. I must apologize for his actions against you, Twilight. I knew that he prided himself on being one of my top researchers, but not to the extent that he would try to commit such an act against you just so he wouldn't have to take on an apprentice. It wasn't that bad. I can almost ignore the silence towards the end of it, but I might ask why we even have such a room. Could he still let out a long sigh? It's used for multiple reasons, but it's mainly for students taking the higher graduate exams. The problem is that at every other time in our lives, if we don't know something, our instinct is to send a query through the hive mind. As you can imagine, that defeats the purpose of testing it to see if you know the answers. Our hive drones are fully capable of surviving days, if not weeks of separation from the link. Longer if they undergo rigorous training. But even then, it is unpleasant. Kadista stopped near an open balcony and sat on her haunches, gazing at the city under the dim glow of the shield dome. Twilight used the opportunity to sit next to her, and leaned against her matriarch. So, our hive's natural resistance to isolation coupled with me being a royal helped keep me from having a mental breakdown? Kudista was starting to enjoy Twilight's physical affection. Correct, but even then I wanted to remain within the hive mind for a minimum of two to four weeks before isolation training. Twilight had some ideas as to why Kudista would want to do that, but didn't voice them so she could enjoy Kudista's company, both in the physical world and within the hive mind. Just promise me a heads up before you do that, please. Kadista took a lesson from the young mare and wrapped her foreleg around Twilight. McQueen found the effects that they had on each other fascinating. She has such an unusual influence. Perhaps there is more equestrian in you than just your spirits. She inwardly chuckled at such an impossible idea. Silence reigned for ten minutes before Sprocket made a low priority request for Kadista's attention. Being what she was, it was trivial for her to keep Twilight company while casting a baleful shadow over the chief engineer. Well? I don't know where you found this former equestrian, but she only got three questions wrong out of 200. It's just not possible. No pony absorbs knowledge that fast. Not very scientific of you to ignore the evidence. All the more reason your reassignment is final. Be glad you remain in Altair. Uh, yes, my queen. Kadista detected more resentment in those words than submission. The matriarch kept her thoughts to herself. You're not useless yet, Sprocket. Don't do anything stupid. She looked down at Twilight, going softly in her embrace. Perhaps I let my ambitions run away again by assigning her to Sprockets. She needs some pony who hasn't let their ego grow bigger than their intelligence. Some pony who is a skilled engineer who's familiar with her. Her focus shifted to another drone who was just now bedding down for the night. Ratchet Altair! Ratchet nearly tripped. Uh, yes, my queen? There's a sudden vacancy in the upper ranks of the engineer cast. I've noticed your exceptional work on the Barrier Tower, and you're being included in the promotion shuffle to Engineer First Class. It took him a moment for him to put his thoughts together. Thank you, my queen. I will do the utmost to be worthy of it, but may I ask something? You may. Why trouble yourself with informing me directly? Because a new assignment will be waiting for you by the end of the week. Prepare to take an apprentice. First Class Engineers were the lowest rank eligible to take an apprentice, but they typically didn't receive one until the next promotion. Kadista could tell that he had been thrown off balance by the news. It will not begin immediately, so you'll have time to settle into your new position first. He sighed in relief. Ah, oh, thank you, my queen. Kadista ended the conversation as her attention drifted to the mare at her side. Come along, Twilight. We should get some rest for the summit tomorrow. Twilight reluctantly pulled away from her queen. All right, but can I ask a favor? I owe you one for letting Sprocket put you in an isolation room. Name it. After the summit, can I go to Equestria for a few days? I want to meet my old friends and hopefully get some more of my memories back. Kadista smiled at the idea. I don't see why not. Your integration into the hive mind is complete, and another trade caravan will be leaving the day after the summits. 
I've quadrupled the guard since that unfortunate event, so it should be safe now. It'll also be a good learning experience for you to see how our love collectors operate. Twilight's wings buzzed out of happiness. Oh, thank you! Ever since I've read my friends' letters, I've been dying to see them! I'm sure that we can all be friends again. Kadista started flying towards the palace with her air in tow. Knowing you, Twilight, I wouldn't doubt it. Damn, I didn't expect Sprocket to actually get kicked out of his position. I originally thought that he would just get a slap on the wrist or something. Something that's minuscule. Ish. Anyways, let's get on to our responsible donators. Top donators are 630, Peter Coldhard, J10 Man, Darkseid, and only one thing. Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rowland, Crazy Killer 557, Stu Hex, Will, Omicron Lyra, Chris, Michael Delaire Moore, Twinkie, Dosbo, Delta Omega, Jack Hedge, Runescythe 9852, Mad Men Stan, Leslie Perkett, Drake Love Dragon, Hunter Norman, Stephen Bingham, Line God 12, Sorcerer Constantine, Hud Zaza, Convair, and many more fantastic people. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and live life to the fullest.